Uh, thank you for having me today, uh, Mark. I really appreciate the uh, International Spy Museum for uh, uh, agreeing to host my uh, book launch. That's uh, very kind of you. And uh, uh, before I get started, I would like to say that I, I, my sister is here with uh, her family. I thank you for coming, uh, as well as uh, my old boss, Steve Gleason, uh, from the State Department is here, and uh, uh, which is very kind of uh, you to come out of retirement to, to visit me, Steve. Uh, uh, it's really good seeing you. Uh, uh, this case uh, uh, is uh, the kind of case that I wish that uh, uh, I could have spent uh, a tremendous more amount of time on uh, back in the early 1980s as well as in the 1990s when I was in an official position uh, to be able to do so. But uh, as many of you know, in that time frame, uh, uh, we were just inundated with uh, terrorist attacks all over the globe, and uh, there wasn't a lot of spare time for uh, cold cases. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, when I first started looking into this case, uh, a good number of the people with firsthand knowledge of this case had, had literally passed on, I'm, I'm afraid, and uh, so uh, the search became uh, extraordinarily difficult at times just to get first-person knowledge of of Colonel Alon, uh, uh, who's the victim of uh, uh, this terrorist attack. Uh, but a little bit about the book. Uh, in July of 1973, uh, three months before uh, the Yom Kippur War, which was uh, Israel's 9-11, uh, a assassin stepped out of the bushes on this very quiet street uh, in Chevy Chase, Maryland, uh, and fired uh, five shots uh, into the body of uh, Colonel Joseph Ulan. And Colonel Ulan was special. Uh, he was uh, a hero of the State of Israel, uh, a very decorated uh, fighter pilot, uh, but he was also uh, the military attaché and uh, was performing a very, very vital role uh, at the time uh, between uh, not only the U.S., uh, but many other countries in this very hostile period of time. Uh, and uh, to, th to think about this case, though, uh, is one that really uh, takes many of us in, in the room back to a time that uh, it's kind of hard to fathom uh, in that uh, we had no cell phones, uh, there was no Internet, uh, and uh, the police, uh, which uh, happened to be my old police department that responded to the scene that night, uh, really did not have the capability or means to investigate uh, an international act of terrorism. And uh, as it is in this business, uh, the old boy network uh, really uh, came forward to, to help. Uh, and uh, I made a call for uh, information out to uh, the Montgomery County Police Association and uh, literally was uh, swamped with requests uh, for uh, help by uh, individuals that responded to the scene of the crime that night. Uh, I was also a, a volunteer with the Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad, and the Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad actually responded to the scene of the murder that night uh, and transported uh, Colonel Alon to Suburban Hospital in Bethesda. Uh, I was fortunate that uh, I was able to interview uh, every one of the rescue squad members that responded to the, to the uh, murder that night as, uh, as well as the uh, Montgomery County Police. And uh, I struck uh, uh, gold uh, in many ways in that uh, the original FBI case agent, uh, Stan Ornstein, uh, surfaced. And he was a, uh, uh, an old civil rights investigator uh, who had transferred up from Birmingham to uh, a very quiet Wheaton FBI office. Uh, and he thought that uh, he would be far removed from this kind of uh, incident. And uh, Stan Ornstein, again, the original FBI agent, uh, was able to fill in uh, a lot of missing pieces early on for me uh, surrounding uh, how important Colonel Alon was. Uh, and uh, uh, these were the kinds of things that only the FBI at that time had access to. Uh, the Montgomery County Police did not have access to uh, very sensitive information that the FBI had possession of. Uh, and uh, Stan and uh, Detective Ed Golian of the Montgomery County Police Cold Case Squad uh, kind of formed a partnership with me to try to 
uh, get to the bottom of what happened. Uh, and uh, I, I, this is probably not a politically correct statement, but I'll say it anyway. Uh, we called ourselves the uh, graybeards. Uh, uh, a lot of the gray hair guys just uh, sitting around trying to figure out what happened to Colonel Alon and trying to uh, put together the pieces of the puzzle. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm uh, truly, truly honored. And I don't know if uh, there's two gentlemen from the Associated Press, and I don't know if they're here. Thank you. Uh, Adam Goldman and Randy Hershaft uh, that uh, provided uh, an extraordinary amount of help. Uh, and as I mentioned in my book, Chasing Shadows, uh, I would not want either one of them hunting me. Uh, they, uh, I'm sure that uh, they do wonderful work, and thank you for coming. Uh, their diligent research uh, in this case uh, provided a critical, critical piece of information uh, that they were able to data mine out of the uh, National Archives uh, from a CIA briefing that had occurred uh, that pretty much uh, put us on the right track and, and uh, to be blunt, uh, told us who done it. And uh, without their help, uh, I certainly would not have been successful. Uh, I also need to mention the uh, Alon family. Uh, the, uh, this was an extraordinarily tragic event for them, as you can imagine, for any of uh, you that have ever lost loved ones in such a violent manner. Uh, and uh, I, I can't say enough about their uh, persistence. Uh, uh, think about this. Uh, this is a quiet home uh, where most of us grew up in. Uh, to have uh, your night shattered with uh, the killing of your father uh, and then rushing out and watching your father die uh, and the next day being whisked away on Air Force Two uh, back home to Israel under presidential order. President Nixon and Dr. Henry Kissinger uh, ordered up Air Force Two to fly the, the body and the family home. Uh, they have been um, unbelievably uh, uh, diligent in trying to get to the bottom of who killed their dad. And uh, uh, I must say that uh, we were very successful in getting uh, Chasing Shadows published in Israel, uh, and it's out last week, and uh, it coincides with a the film there. Uh, and from what I understand, uh, it's doing quite well. So I, I am very proud that uh, at the, the Alon family at least has uh, some closure. Uh, when, when you're doing these kinds of cases, as many of you know that are from the business here, and certainly my old boss Steve Gleason knows, uh, you can only do the best you can at times in these investigations, meaning uh, everybody's looking for absolutes. And uh, very rarely do you have absolutes in the intelligence business. Uh, you have an operation, you have a theme, uh, you may have 75% of the puzzle, you may get lucky to get 90% of the puzzle, but you never get 100%, uh, at least uh, based on the cases that I've worked. Uh, uh, you know who did it, you know why, uh, but you never get 100%. And uh, I'm also optimistic that with the media surrounding the, uh, the book uh, here in the United States as well as in Israel, uh, and it's also being published uh, in the United Kingdom, that uh, missing pieces or what is known as intelligence gaps uh, are filled uh, by any uh, thing that, uh, that perhaps we missed. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I think that uh, the Elan family can uh, sleep soundly knowing that, uh, that uh, their father uh, was gunned down uh, in an act of political terrorism. Um, uh, he deserved better. Uh, at that time, there wasn't a lot of protection for resident foreign officials. Uh, in 1973, uh, my organization, the Diplomatic Security Service, was formed uh, after tragedy of bombings that Steve Gleason investigated in the 1980s. Uh, if this case had happened today, uh, there's no doubt that the case would be uh, rapidly solved. Uh, but this is a time period, uh, again, before DNA, uh, before anything that you see on CSI existed. Uh, and uh, uh, I must say this, that um, uh, I, I really am extraordinarily grateful uh, to a host of individuals, uh, uh, predominantly in uh, Beirut, that uh, uh, wanted no recognition uh, for what they did. 
uh, in helping me get to uh, some of the old radical uh, Palestinian uh, quote-unquote terrorists. Uh,